know, you think about these old cars like this, this Buick. Everybody back in those days, and this was even made before I was born here. I know you think most everything I was around for, <laughs> but this actually came out before I was born. But back in those days, cars, you know, and, and especially in the U.S., most cars were American cars that you bought, and everybody drove a brand. You know, if you drove mm -hmm. a Buick, it's like you drove a Buick forever or yeah. a Chevy forever, unless you moved up. And it was really seemed to be a significant thing. I know when I was a kid growing up, if if your neighbor went from a Chevrolet to a Buick, boy, they were moving up in life, you know, and everybody knew about it and talked about it. But these were the cars you'd see sitting in the driveways. And I had a friend that actually had one of these Buicks. I think his was even a 55. Kind of cool the way you start this, you turn it on to the on position and you push the accelerator pedal. Oh, that is cool. Huh. And automatically then notice. What does off do? Shuts it off. No seatbelts. No seatbelts, wow. <laughs> I told you about that Ferrari video where you made the comments about liking the automatic oh, I better know. than that. And someone said, oh, you need to pick better friends, Drew. Yeah, probably so. It's a nice riding car. It is nice, yes. This was the best year for Buick until 1983, and it finally reached a production number that was comparable to 1955. I don't remember what they produced, but I think it was seven, 738,000 vehicles, and they were the third biggest automobile maker in the country at that time. Buick? So, yeah, so they were behind Ford and Chevy. You know, and I read up on a little bit, of, this was their best selling, this Buick Special Riviera Coupe, hardtop coupe was their best-selling model out of all their lines for 1955. They sold over 155,000 just of this model. And it was one of their lower priced ones. Lowest priced offering from Buick at the time. Models above that were the Century and the Roadmaster, right? Right, but they had their own sub-models like the Riviera like this too. Yeah. But uh, they're just higher trim levels and had bigger. I think this is what they called the Series 40. I think there was a 50, 60, and 70 series, and this one had the smallest. The Series 40 had the smaller engine, which I think was a 264 V8. Okay. And then I think the others had the bigger, I don't remember what the cubic inch displacement on those, I think it was like 325 or something like that. But, but typically, the bigger Buicks, the portholes on the cars were the big thing that the yeah. Buicks kind of yeah. became their trademark. And, used to be with the senior series Buicks, you got four portholes, yeah, the bigger engines, right. and so that's why I think this one only has three, it had the it, smaller. It does, it only has three because it is a baseline model. Ventiport? So the, yeah, the, the portholes were called Ventiports, uh, designed by one guy who was, I think, a high up at Buick, and this was in 1948. He designed those Ventiports as his own customization. So they put the portholes or ventiports on the side of the cars, but they didn't do the light up thing. So that's all that made it to the production line. <laughs> Just a jammed up ashtray. Mm. The speaker's down here. Look at him and say he might not be ready to go his rookie year, that's and that's good. A, that that's fine. That Sonomatic. That's such great names back then for everything. Yeah, they did. Sonomatic or Sonomatic. Sonomatic. You know that. It is, is, is that like a the Pista, whatever that was? Oh, the Ferrari Pista. Pista, the Ferrari Pista. That's a joke. That. Probably no one will like that watches our videos. We know it's a pista. <laughs> I just accidentally said pista once and got made fun of for it, so I guess it's a pista now. I have no room to talk because I mispronounce more names. What was that one you said yesterday? Start with an S. Uh, Scuderia. Scuderia, was that yeah, it? Yeah, I think that was it. Scuderia. From, it was a Ferrari.
Ferrari Scuderia, and you, you said... I'm slaughtered at Sunday, yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> you, you messed it up. <laughs> I was confused, but figured it out. I was getting these cars and reach for the seatbelt. Uh, exactly, yeah. Uh, all right, here we go. Wait. Got juice. Houston, we have a problem. At least we're at the museum and not. Yeah, exactly. Wow. I didn't know I was supposed to color coordinate your red. I guess you just don't care about I don't the get cars the drive. I don't get the memos. It is, yeah. Playing and steering wheel all that play in the wheel. Just one lighter in the Buick. Virgin. Now on the Continental, that's about 1,200 of these. Yeah. In there. Yeah, one. Definitely not a virgin lighter. Huh. The owners of this car all died of lung cancer, I'm sure. Huh. This sucker is well used. Exactly. This car was restored it's partially, not like anything like that Ford. Yeah. So it's going to ride different. And, I mean, if I think if you had a really fully, not, fully restored. Buick Special Riviera Coupe. Styling wise, this car is just. It is. Stands out from a traditional Ford. It does look much better than a Ford. Cool. I was, okay. ha I was <laughs> having a nap back here. <laughs> <laughs> brakes are a little touchy there, yeah, driver. Power brakes. Huh. Yeah, they are. Touchy. What's this? This um, is a Buick? That's a Buick? <laughs> it's not a Park Avenue Ultra like you like. Oh, but, but it's a Buick. But it's a Buick Special. Yes. Those were the worst commercials ever, weren't they? <laughs> That's a Buick? Were you back there the whole time? I, I was. I showed up and you were huh. making a video and I just kind of took a nap, you know? I was <laughs> presenting you with a new car and you guys were busy to acknowledge my existence, as usual. <laughs> presenting us with a new car? Yes! I guess we'll have to go well, let's check it. It's back at the museum? It's a major piece of cultural history. <laughs> okay. It's so significant. I mean, this is going to be the Hope Diamond of your collection. Okay, if you insist, and this is our piece of cultural history oh, that we yes. brought with you. Look at that. I love it. So you want to be a player, <laughs> but your ride ain't fly. <laughs> Step on up. Pimp my ride. And yeah, touchy brakes. Look at that. Very impressive. Behold, a 1999 Plymouth Grand Voyager. Wow. Orphan branded Dodge Caravan. Yes? I love it. So, the owner of this van was down on our luck until Exhibit and the people at uh, Galpin Auto Sports on Pimp My Ride came and pimped her ride. Beautiful. Yes. So, you have a custom paint job, rims, a body kit, which is maybe the only Plymouth Grand Voyager in the world with a body kit. I'd say it belongs in a. It belongs in a museum! It's like Harrison Ford. It does Ford. belong in a museum. Yeah. Art museum, too. Are you not appreciating this? No, I think it's great. I love it. She was a fan of jeans. <laughs> okay. So the whole interior is denim. Open that door. This is uh it Looks like the back of a pinball machine or something. It does, yes. <laughs> yes, that's all the magic happening on the other side, which I just opened for you. Wow. So yeah, this is the real magic here. You have a sofa in the back with a footrest that is also a television that becomes Does it turn on? Aroused. Oh yes, all nine televisions in this thing work. You have three more right here and you have a jewelry making station. This lights up as a disco floor and a laser light show. Wow. Very impressive. <laughs> Subwoofer? To no amplifiers. way and a heart-shaped exhaust tip. No way. <laughs> this is the most exciting thing we have in the collection. Certainly, yes. 
Not um, a Lamborghini Aventador. No. Not a split window. Got TV crazy on that show. They would put TVs everywhere inside <laughs> of cars. You know, it is a very interesting. I think that Pimp My Ride kind of mainstreamed car customization. Yeah. One on YouTube trending. Crazy. 15 million views. He's got 200,000 subscribers just from a van he bought for $800. Under the condition, my daughter said that I could never ever sell it, which I'm not selling it, I'm giving it to the Midwest Dream Car Collection. But in 10 years, if she wants it, it can be her first car. I told her it could be her first car, but I'm banking on the fact that in 10 years when she's a teenager, she's, she's not gonna want it. She won't wanna I'm drive a minivan to yeah. high school. You should devote a whole two hour long video <laughs> okay. to it. Yeah, we get 15 million views uh -huh. on it too. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe to the video. Come to the Midwest Dream Car Collection to see this beautiful piece of art, which we have just acquired. It will, it will only be here for 15 years. <laughs> Goodbye.